So just like I did last year, I'm going to be making the exact same video like I did. I'm going to be talking about five potential breakout candidates for the Jacksonville Jaguars in the 2022 NFL season. Now, this list will not include quarterback Trevor Lawrence because he's the quarterback. He's the most important position in all of sports. Plus, I've kind of already given my prediction as to what I expect out of Trevor Lawrence in year two and his first season with Doug Peterson. If you guys want to see that video, I will link to it up above. But also, this list will not include any rookies at all just because of the fact that I'm going to be basing this list off, hey, I've at least seen one year out of you in the NFL. Now, what can I expect from you heading into the 2022 NFL season? So no rookies on this list. And yes, I know I'm wearing this outfit. I got the tie on, got the collar on, but it's because I got to go to a meeting at UNF shortly after this video is recorded. But also, y'all know Brett James is going to be on ESPN one day, so I got to look the part. Let's get into today's video. Now, before we actually get into today's video, if you guys could drop me a like, it takes one second and it helps me and the channel out tremendously. And if you guys are new here, consider hitting that subscribe bell to stay tuned for more NBA and of course, Jacksonville Jaguars content that I do here on YouTube. And if you guys could, make sure y'all go follow me on my socials. The link tree will be in the description down below. And we officially launched my Don't Overthink It podcast that I do every week with my co-host Darian Chill Takes, where we talk NFL, NBA, and some Jacksonville Jaguars on the podcast. You guys can go check it out on Apple Podcasts, Spotify. We created our TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube page. The link tree will be in the description down below for y'all to go check out the podcast. Now let's get into today's video. So the number five potential breakout candidate for the Jacksonville Jaguars in 2022 is going to come with cornerback Shaq Griffin. Now Shaquille Griffin was definitely a little bit of a disappointment for a lot of Jaguars fans and he would probably speak for himself and say too that he didn't play up to the standard to which he thinks he could play in 2021. My main thing this offseason was catching football. So I try to get maybe 75 to 100 catches a day. Um, if I miss, then I'm catching on weekends. So whatever it takes, that's what I've really been doing. And then um, getting my speed back. Uh, I've been working with some uh, track guys, you know, getting that explosion, that quick twitch, all that stuff back. So I think that'd be my main focus. I need that ball in my hand. I need to go really fast. Did the drop interceptions bother you that much? Huh? Did the drop interceptions bother you that much? Most definitely. I definitely care myself who can catch. So me not being able to grab one last year, definitely something that, that stuck with me. So uh, my main thing is I need to catch everything that comes to me this year for the ones. If I feel like if I catch the ones I'm supposed to catch, I think I'd be just fine. So uh, when I look back at it in retrospect, outside of Rayshon Jenkins, who was the only other veteran in the secondary, Shaq Griffin was the only one who had actually proven anything in the secondary alongside Rayshon Jenkins, Andrew Wingard, Andre Sisco never touched the field, and Tyson Campbell was a rookie, and he eventually got better as the season went along, but it definitely took him a while to get comfortable and used to the NFL game and NFL speed. But with Shaq Griffin, he had his opportunities to get himself in a position to create some interceptions, and he definitely had a couple interceptions that he dropped last season, and most notably in the first drive of week one at Houston when he dropped the pass right there coming off of Tyrod Taylor's hands. But Shaq Griffin is the most proven veteran in our secondary, probably alongside Darius Williams as well, coming over from the LA Rams. But just strictly off the fact that I've talked about Shaq Griffin, I believe, who's gonna be playing in the nickel, and I do believe that the Jaguars in a base 3-4 will continue to keep Darius Williams on the outside and Tyson Campbell on the outside. When Shaq Griffin gets his opportunities on the inside to probably line up on some tight ends because he's got the size, and the physicality, but also he's going to be on a lot more slot receivers, which is going to fit more so to his game. And I do think that regardless if he is going to play on the outside or in the nickel, but I just believe he'll be in the nickel. Having more pressure and having more weapons on the defensive side of the ball is only going to help alleviate a lot more pressure off of him because he was truly the only guy in the secondary last year that had proven anything. So, of course, he wasn't going to be targeted quite as much. But Shaq Griffin, I definitely think is poised for a bounce back season and a breakout season for the Jaguars in 2022. Now, number four on this list is going to come with edge rusher and outside linebacker Josh Allen. Now, the Josh Allen has not registered double digit sacks since his rookie season. And I think he was a pro bowler back in 2019, if memory serves me correctly, with Calais Campbell as well, too. But these last two seasons have not been very good for Josh Allen and for the Jaguars in general. Josh Allen has not had the edge rusher alongside of him to help alleviate some of that pressure off of him and really take some looks off of him. Head coach Doug Peterson has said on numerous occasions after they drafted Trayvon Walker and just in a press conference yesterday, I will clip that there for you guys to see that adding more pieces to the defensive side of the ball and when offensive teams have to scheme for the Jaguars defense 
guys are going to have to look at more weapons on the defensive side of the ball and say, hey, we need to plan for this guy. We need to plan for that guy. And then maybe Josh Allen doesn't get double teamed as much and he can flourish a lot better. Let me play that clip for you guys right here. Well, I, I think it can only help him, you know, and, and it takes a little, um, you know, uh, pressure or stress, whatever, off, off of him. I, I think, you know, opponents are going to have to, if, if the success is there, and we hope it is, that, that you know, as teams scheme us on defense, that that it maybe it frees up, you know, Josh to be able to be more uh, of what he was just a couple years ago and, and uh, getting back to that. And um, I think having those pieces around him can do that. But I definitely just think the fact that the Jaguars added a lot more pieces on defense. I like the fact that Mike Caldwell is the defensive coordinator, a former linebacker, and he's done a great job with other linebackers in the past, especially with his time with the Tampa Bay Super Bowl winning Buccaneers. You look at the job that he did with guys like Devin White, Shaq Barrett, and the list goes on. He's done a great job developing linebackers, being a former linebacker himself. I definitely think that this helps out Josh Allen a lot, and I think Josh Allen's able to get back to a double-digit plus sack season. I do think that he's going to tie his rookie and career high with 10 and a half sacks this year. Then that rolls me on to my number three breakout candidate. Give me safety, Andre Sisco. Now, I already briefly mentioned Andre Sisco's name, our third round pick out of Syracuse in the 2021 draft, but Andre Sisco has some serious and high potential upside. I do believe that he had 14 interceptions with his time in the ACC when he was at Syracuse, but he did have an injury. I think it was an ACL injury when his time was coming out of college. He rehabbed from that, and we didn't see a lot of Andre Sisco in his first season in the NFL. He did have a couple of shining moments where he did pop out onto the field, but he was really benched for a guy in Andrew Wingard for a majority of the season, which a lot of Jaguar fans were very upset about. And I do think the fact that he will be starting probably alongside Rayshon Jenkins, and maybe we'll see what happens with Daniel Thomas as well too, who I really like a lot too. Andre Sisco is poised to have a breakout season just strictly off the fact that he really didn't see much action last year. And I do think that he actually is going to lead this team in interceptions. I already said that in a video a couple of weeks ago as well. So Andre Sisco is my number three breakout candidate. My number two breakout candidate for the Jacksonville Jaguars in 2022 is going to come with cornerback Tyson Campbell, another name that I already briefly mentioned. Tyson Campbell took some time to get used to the NFL game, the NFL speed, and the fact that the Jaguars just did not have a lot of talent on the defensive side of the ball. He was easily targeted at least the first nine to 10 weeks of the NFL season, but you saw he finished the season with two interceptions to finish off his rookie campaign, and Tyson Campbell was playing a lot better clamp defense in press man-to-man -man coverage and you saw sometime in these zone coverages in drop back coverage he was playing the quarterback's eyes and doing a lot better job Tyson Campbell has the length and versatility to excel and Tyson Campbell just really is a guy that a lot of Jaguar fans were excited about he really came into his own and I expect big big things from him in year two I expect a Jalen Ramsey type of breakout sophomore campaign from him I don't want to place those kind of expectations on him, but I'm saying that's how valuable and highly I think of a guy like Tyson Campbell, I'm not expecting him to be Jalen Ramsey, but a sophomore campaign breakout like we saw from Jalen Ramsey in year two is something similar I expect from a guy out of Tyson Campbell because he's got that kind of potential. And then my number one breakout candidate for the Jacksonville Jaguars in 2022, if you haven't guessed already, you should be able to guess by now. Give me Travis Etienne, similar to a guy like Andre Sisco, a guy we obviously did not see much of last year, strictly due to the fact that he had a Liz Frank injury and he missed his entire rookie campaign. Travis Etienne, if you guys have been following me on this channel for an extended period of time, you guys know that is the one player I'm going to absolutely defend in my core. And I have said religiously from the time he was drafted to this very moment, I was excited about that pick. That was not a bad pick. We did not reach on a guy like Travis Etienne. And you see how excited Doug Peterson and Trevor Lawrence are to have a dynamic playmaker, a guy who's got home run ability. He's got a different skill set than a guy like James Robinson and Snoop Connor. And Travis Etienne really is just a dynamic playmaker who brings that thunder and lightning to the backfield. He can split them out wide, use them in different packages. And I am just so excited to watch what Travis Etienne does. And he might not exactly pop off exactly like that. It might still take him some time to get used to the NFL game, but running back is definitely one of the easier positions to translate from college to the NFL game. And especially when you have chemistry, continuity, and some level of familiarity with a guy like Trevor Lawrence, AKA Mr. Sunshine, 
that's going to help them both out tremendously. And I am so excited for Travis Etienne. He's going to at least get a thousand plus scrimmage yards this season. I'm very confident in saying that. But Jaguar fans, I want to hear your guys' thoughts in the comments down below. Give me five potential breakout candidates for you guys. And who do you think is going to be the number one guy who breaks out for the Jaguars this season? I know I didn't mention names like Christian Kirk and Dan Arnold and Evan Ingram and probably a handful of others. I only had one guy on offense, but that's how highly I think of this defense. I think of this defense will statistically be a top 10 defense by the end of the season but Jaguar fans like I said let me know your thoughts in the comments down below and like I said if you guys are new here consider hitting that subscribe bell to stay tuned for more NBA and of course Jacksonville Jaguars content that I do here on YouTube and if you guys haven't already make sure y'all drop me a like it takes one second and it helps me in the channel out tremendously thank you guys again Brett James aka BJ I'm out y'all go Jags baby peace <laughs>